2018 Mercedes GLE 400 and uh, it has a problem with the intake uh, camshaft uh, on the bank one. Uh, we're trying, you're gonna see that code on your screen now. We're trying to see what's going on. So it's pissing oil, I see already. It squirted a little bit of oil out. Oh, it jumped. Yep, it jumped. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, is the rear okay? So this the tone ring is okay. Okay. Can you can you do it again, please? Yeah, well, the fact that it's leaking oil is already not good. It's also jumping like that. That's interesting. Doesn't want to jump anymore. Probably need the whole full circle. It only jumps in one spot. Oh yeah, it jumped again. All right. I hope it's visible on the video. So yeah, it needs. It takes about 40 hours to do this job uh, by the book. Let's see how long it's gonna take us. We have removed a lot of parts around this and uh, we were able to remove this uh, camshaft adjuster on the spot here without having to pull the timing cover and it was indeed defective and also there is this this tone ring if you will is shifted in relation to the camshaft about a millimeter or so there is a mark on the bottom I'm not sure if it's visible on the camera so it's it's shifted a little bit i hope it's visible let's get some light in there yeah so we need to realign it back into position and then weld it a little bit tack weld it to the camshaft itself so it doesn't shift again because that is going to give you an error code as well very bad design very poor design for a car that cost this much money it should be built much better oh. we decided to remove the camshaft and uh, Tack weld that, reposition that tone ring and then tack weld it to make sure that it's gonna be sitting there in that position. There's a wrench on the back. Don't forget. By the way, very, very good idea here. We put a breaker bar on the back of the camshaft. Put a breaker bar on the back of the camshaft here to be able to loosen that bolt in the front. Two marks, one on the camshaft, 
one on the tone ring. They're mismatched, misaligned by about one and a half to two millimeters. So we made such a device out of aluminum to be able to turn this whole thing. We're probably gonna heat it up with a little pocket torch and uh, try and turn it and see if it turns. Oh, it feels like it moved. It looks like it moved. Good? Moved? Beautiful. It actually moved. So we have uh, managed to turn it and it marks now a line so that's uh, that's supposed to work well uh, now i have to tack weld it a little bit with the tig welder to make sure it doesn't slip anymore so i'm going to tig weld this uh, tone ring in place i already made one one a little pig weld in that spot. Gonna do two more. And I'm gonna actually show you. Actually gonna show you how I do it. I'm not gonna use any filler. I'm just gonna melt the I'm just gonna fuse these. Now just gotta do it in one more spot. It will be three spots. By the way, I've already pre-ground a little bit so it doesn't have any oil residue because it's not gonna weld well if there's oil. Beautiful. That's it, ready to, in to be installed. Now we gotta spend like another two days to install that stuff. And uh, that'll be it. gonna be torquing this to 130 newton meters of uh, torque and we're gonna be holding in the back here with the same way we removed it just on the other side so I'm gonna be holding this punch and my colleague will be torquing this all right let's go Almost feels like there is no oil on the mating yeah. surface. Okay. All right, so it's all done. Now the assembly begins. 
So that that's gonna be another day or two. Mercedes is coming back together. Just need to install some intercooler and hoses and stuff. And it should be starting today. Although it's a very hard assembly, it's, it was a little easier to disassemble it than assemble it back. So, very big job. And we didn't even take apart the front cover. With the front cover, it would have been much harder. Okay, so we finished our uh, insane huge project on fixing that camshaft adjuster. Oh, replacing it and fixing the camshaft. And uh, now we need to bleed the turbocharger cooling system. And in order to do that, we need a scanner. We need a scan tool that has uh, this function in there. So pretty sophisticated one is the one you need. Uh, so we use Autel. Here we go, let's do it. So we can hear the pump had switched on and is now bleeding the system. So here is the pump and it's running. I'm not sure if it's going to be audible, but it is running. If, if there is going to be air pockets, the intercooler is not going to be cooling air enough. And if the air is not cold enough, the one that's going into the engine is going to be too hot and that can create issues. Oh yeah, we see some bubbles. So there you go, that's the air, purging air, right there. It's running nice now. Without issues. Looks like we have succeeded. Fuck. It was a very painful job. This concludes the whole job. Overall, it took about uh, 25 hours instead of the 40 by the book, but we didn't do the chains, we didn't do any other camshaft adjusters, although the other camshaft adjusters were pretty close. We didn't have to do any more disassembly to get those out. The only thing that we could not do is, was the chains, but the chains were in perfect condition and they did not need to get replaced. So no point spending two extra days to do the chains. I think this repair is uh, better than anything else you could have done. The camshaft, is, the tone ring is never going to move again. Unless there is meat grinder happening in there. The reason we didn't do the other camshaft adjusters, which would have been a wise idea, was because the warranty coverage was only for a certain amount and uh, it was way out of the budget so we just did this one that was creating the issue normally i would recommend to do all of them and weld all of those uh, sensor rings in there so that there is no more issues in that area at least anyway thanks for watching and have a great day